thank you for coming back and joining us today. We're going to be revisiting everything from coping right down to putting new furniture on our feathered one. And today's victim, uh, I mean volunteer, will be Mojave. Mostly because he's bigger and it's easier to see everything that we're going to be doing. The other reason being, I'd like to revisit the first part of getting them ready for passing off and putting them into a casting jacket, which is the small packaging technique. It's a little different, obviously, than the way that we cast a falcon, who's usually standing hooded on another person's glove, before we pass them off and get them into the casting jacket. So today, we're going to be covering coping, sort of revisit the tools that I use a little bit. We'll be re visiting the furniture on the legs, inclusive of, the big one, we're gonna be putting Mojave's bells on him, which he's not going to thank me for, but they look gorgeous. Now I'm gonna be using traditional design buets. Those are the little straps that attach the bells to the legs. They're a little bit different from the ones that I learned how to make. These ones come from Westwheel Falconry Supplies. Once again, thank you, Brian and Bonnie, for being there for us. So we're gonna cover all of that. Once again, if you like what you see today, make sure that you give us a like and please subscribe. We're building our community, having the best time. Questions and comments down below. So without further ado, why don't we just crack on? blustery and windy outside so we thought we'd just kibosh any plans on doing this kind of thing outdoors today. Now you'll recall when we've got a big one on our glove and we're going to be casting them we kind of want them to try to nose dive off of our glove that helps us to get them into the small package. Okay so right now he knows what I want him to do he knows being brought inside means you guys are going to mess with me and he doesn't want to get off my glove, so I want to encourage him to get off my glove. Okay, so now when he's down here, this is what I want. I don't want him coming back up under my glove. Right, because he knows that what I'm going to do next is small package him. So, very carefully, especially when they're molting, which Mojave is, bringing his wing into his body in the anatomical position. He's not going to let me do it straight away. Bringing the wing in. And gently use your body, gently, very carefully with that wing. Right? So now I have him small packaged. Right? And I'm using my glove to protect myself from his talons for obvious reasons. So what would happen now, if we had a third person, you would see Brian step in, and he would, as I lift Mojave up, so that his back is against Brian's chest, he would be sliding his fingers between the upper part of Mojave's legs so that he's got control of the business end of the bird. So now let's try that again in slow motion. You ready?
So once again, guys, we recall that Mo's actually pretty good about not biting me. Um, nevertheless, I'm always careful to protect myself and them so that I can get my fingers around the back of their skull and thumb into the mouth to protect their soft, soft palate and the tongue, of course. Now, he's not looking too bad in terms of his proportions. I don't need to take off too much. Yes, I know, sweetheart. Uh, probably just three millimeters or so for shaping purposes. All right. There we go. First things first, I want to take out the overgrowth that's in the sides of his beak, which you can see really nicely there. And especially when you're doing this one of the first times, take your time. You can always take off a little more at a time. We can't put anything back if we make a mistake. So be conservative until you've had a lot of practice and your confidence level is ideally where you want it to be. Of course, we're being very, very careful with Mo right now because they're all in the molt. So we're being as gentle as possible with him while he's in this casting jacket. And then we'll shampoo, rinse, repeat on the other side. And any time the files are coming into contact with anything, it's coming into contact with me, with my thumb. Just like ourselves, the soft palate in their tongue is very, very sensitive. These are very fragile tissues. You want to be very, very careful. So right now I'm just working on the point. Taking some jagged bits off here and when we snip the end off. Okay, so it gives me the rough proportions. Now Remembering, of course, that a big hawk, a big eagle, like Goldie, for example, their beak comes out of their face and really hooks over. So we want to help his beak to naturally follow what it really would prefer to do. So using a large round file, I'm going to put some gentle pressure back toward myself on the inside plane of his beak. And that's just going to give us some curvature to shape too. I've had some really good questions about using a Dremel. You'll probably remember some of you that I'm not as keen on them as some folks are. One of my mentors at the ICBP, Mark Palmer, made it look like the most elegant, quick, skilled 
execution of, of getting the beet coat that I'd ever seen. My main concern with the Dremel is the noise. But having said that, I did notice last time we were visiting Dr. Collis that his Dremel is actually quite quiet. So the technology must be improving, which often is the case. So again, I'm just giving back the shape to the front of Moe's beak. He's going to, over the next very short span of days, just from eating and feeking, he's going to smooth this out. And as, of course, as it grows, it's going to re-achieve its sort of a more natural look. No, you're being so good. You are being so good. You're so handsome, my love. You're so handsome. Everybody says so. So, proportions don't look too bad. I'm just going to tidy up that corner just a little bit. Of all of them, Mojave is probably the easiest one to do this job on. More to work with, after all. I know, son. I know. You're being very brave. Okay. So now, so let, us catch his, let him catch his breath for a second. So now all I have to do is bring the lower part of his beak into proportion so it fits nicely inside the upper part of his beak. And it's not looking too bad. So I'm not going to do too much to it. Especially when they're molting, we don't want to be grabbing them up. If we can help it at all, but if we have to, very, very little. And then making sure, guys, when we're doing the lower beak, that we're smoothing out the outer sides. Just taking those wear marks down where upper and lower have come together. I'm 
And then I'm going to check the fit to make sure that we're nice and comfortable. And then we'll let him have his little coffee break before we do part two. Got a nice gap of about a millimeter and a half on the inside plane. So he's not going to rub, he's not going to be going clickety, clickety, clickety. The worst part of the maneuver is this part, because he doesn't particularly care for lipstick. But this is just a little hoof maker. There we go, son. There we go. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yes, it fits lovely. It's really, really lovely. Okay, we're going to let him cool down, guys. And we'll come back for part two. So now we're going to change Mojave's furniture. Now, with him all cast up, he's not getting away from Brian anytime. So I can take his swivel and leash off. This is going to be a little stiff. Sort of being mindful of the fact that his feet are right there. Mo has, in general, some pretty good manners. When he's all cast up like this, his first instinct isn't to grab me. I can only think of a couple of times where he sort of flexed his talons at me. So that is wonderful. Now, keeping in mind that the quickest way to do this is to have all your gear ready, made beside you, and ready to go so that we are keeping the stress level down, keeping the, the fact that they're in the cast to as short a period of time as possible. Unless, of course, you're lucky and you can get up and take them outside for a breath of fresh air and let them cool down for a little bit. All right, now, when you're doing this, you want to bring the scissors as close to the grommet as possible, making sure that you're cutting toward yourself and never toward them. Okay, that's fine. Now, again, remembering that the smooth side of the leather of the anklet that you've made is facing toward their skin. And you want their ring number or their contact number, ring number, if you've got one of those on one of their legs, to be above the anklet. And I've treated this with Jesse grease already, so it's nice and supple. Make sure it's nice and smooth, there's no rough edges sticking up, and you can hit it again. Tighten down your grommet setters a little bit and hit it a second time. So you've really got to squeeze hard to get them closed. All right. And your new Jesse. You want the knurl, remember that's what the knot is called. Your knurl is on the outside of their leg. Like so, okay? And because I've cut little slots into this, that's going to create like a little cuff. Now this is firm right now, but this is going to stretch. In a few days time, this will have some stretch to it. Okay, so that's number one. So Brian will switch over and take control of Mo's right foot so that I can get near is left. Okay, and once again, where I'm putting the scissors, putting the flat side closest to him, but I'm bringing the blades closest to the grommet and cutting away. Okay, while well, I've got him here, take a look at that very old injury and we see 
there's actually no trace of it at all. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay. I'm trying not to catch their feathers if you can help it. They will come back out again, but I'm just trying to be courteous after all. And you'll have pre-stretched the hole that the grommet goes through so that it should just slip right through, no problem, especially once you've treated these with Jesse Grease. Okay. and smooth, no rough edges, nothing that could cut them or hurt them in any way. Hit it a second time, make sure. Okay, that's good. And again, Jesse, the knot is to the word the outside of their leg. Now, before I put swivels or anything else on him, what I would like to do is get his buets on. Now this is a traditional buet. I've got a couple of different options for tightness that I can set it at. These are a little bit different from the ones that I typically make. And I'll do a little in-service showing you how I make buets very soon. Now you'll remember that these are the Lahore Bells. So these aren't the really expensive ones, but they got a pleasant enough ring to them. All right. Now, again, anything like this, you want it to be below the ring number. I'm being really mindful of his feet here. And the way that these go, again, this is the smooth side in. Same rule as when you're putting Jesses on them. And then I, what I want to do is feed the end of the buet through the hole. And then I bring the little knurl back through the slit. And just give that a little tug. And you can see how that cinches down right there. Now I suppose what I could do is trim off this little piece of leather. I'm just, like I say, this is a bit of an experiment to see how this goes with these. But because he pulled off the last ones I made, I'm, I'm open to trying this. So there is a bit of play. They're not tight against his legs, and they'll sit against the top of his anklets. And there's really no way for that to come off there at all. So we'll see how it goes. So you can see how easily they go on, guys. Right. And then shampoo, rinse, repeat on the other side. Ryan's just going to... Okay. Again, your bell, you want it on the back of the leg, smooth side in. I'm going to feed the tail of the buet through the hole, like so. And these jesses are really, or these little buets are really supple, so the leather is very easy to work with. All right. And then this little slit right here. You can see the little slit on the end of this goes up and over the little knurl on the buet. And then we give that a tug. And what you can do is just sort of take hold of the bell, slip your finger in there and tighten it down. Okay, you can see how it folds around. It looks a little bit like when your jesses go around the, uh, the swivel. It has that same sort of appearance right there. All right, now I know that Mo's not gonna thank me for putting his bells back on, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, so last but not least, and again, these are those lovely brass swivels I was talking to you guys about very recently. 
just love these. They don't hang up, they don't snag. Very, very nice. Right, so I'm just going to position my hand a little bit like so. Okay, so we put the jesses together. right up over top of the swivelly part, and two. Go. Like so. Leash goes through. And then tying him back off to Brian's glove. All right. Okay. Alrighty guys, well we hope you enjoyed that revisit of casting, coping, putting bells on, among other things. If you have any questions or comments, once again, down below, let's get those conversations going. I'd love to hear from some master falconers. Uh, how are you teaching, how are you mentoring your students and, and tips and tricks that you've learned along the way? We'd love to, to hear from you for sure. I'm going to put a link down below on how to make your own jesses, buets, anklets, all that sort of stuff, including it also covers how to make the traditional um, buets for mounting the bells on, as well as a technique that the person has developed for themselves for a design that they like a little bit better. So hopefully you feel like Mojave was a good teacher today. I think he did a lovely job. He certainly looks just dashing in his new gear, but I'm gonna get him outside. <laughs> I'm going to get him outside after he has a very late dinner and let him settle down and hopefully have some very good dreams. So once again, thanks everyone for coming and being with us today. From Brian, the Feathered Ones, Mojave and myself, thanks again. Cheers. Bye. You were lovely. Yeah. <laughs> you were lovely. You were lovely. Yes, you were lovely. And you were all Yes, you were. It's just a little bit of sweat. You're blowing.